because it's the live craft zoom i think i can uh okay do stuff yeah. right on well i'm just gonna share my screen i just started record um Wesley, what do you do for work? I'm a heavy equipment mechanic. Oh, I work okay. up, uh, north of Fort McMurray. Oh, wow. This guy's saying no work questions. No, I'm just kidding. Get huh? out of here. <laughs> Wesley, I, I feel like I recognize the walls. Are you in Firebag right now? No, I'm at, um, <laughs> I'm at Fort Hills, but I fly into Firebag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Four Hills, yeah, like, like there, it's the same walls. It's the same Suncor camp. That's too funny, man. I spent years up there. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. What did you do up here? I I uh, I work for a company called ProStar, and we run, it was automated service rigs. So, oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah, they're still up there, actually. They're still doing stuff up there. But we'll, we'll, let's chat about that later. I'd love to hear more about it. But I don't want to step on Dan's uh, presentation toes here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we cool. can talk about so Suncor later <laughs> and the oil and the oil patch um, right on. So yeah, tonight, you know, one, one thing I've thought about a lot and I talked to Jeanette about a lot and, and we hear about it, you know, certainly at the studio is, is just themes around boundaries uh, and, and a few th reasons why I wanted to, you know, talk about this tonight. I think um, there's a very big misunderstanding of what boundaries actually are oftentimes um, and then just to really highlight the importance of, you know, spending some time to discover kind of what our real boundaries are and learning, you know, how we can enforce those and, and, and how we can, um, you know, build a, a stronger home at the, at the end of the day. And you'll understand the home analogy shortly um, where we can feel safe and where we can, you know, be uh, our true selves and rely on ourselves and feel that we're standing up uh, and protecting ourselves when we, need, when we need to. And it just allows us to be more, you know, confident and out there. And, and there's lots of other benefits that I'll go into. Um, no particular book today, uh, but there's a lot of podcasting on this topic. Um, and that's really where, you know, I got most of my content. Um, <clears throat> and, and there's, you know, I, I would just search for this kind of stuff on, on Spotify and there's like just a tremendous amount of content that's available. And, um, I'm constantly uh, astounded at the quality of the stuff that's out there for free almost. And it's really, really, really powerful. Um, so yeah, I would suggest that uh, you check some of those out for yourself if any of these areas seem interesting. Um, and I can give you um, some uh, uh, recommendations, particularly Stephanie Rigg, uh, who's in Australia. And I can send you those links if, uh, if any of you ever want them anyway. So I broke this down into three pieces. Firstly, like what are boundaries? So just really clarifying maybe some misconceptions or misunderstandings about what boundaries are and what they're not. Uh, and then we get into setting healthy boundaries. Um, and thirdly, I'm just going to move this out of the way. You guys are kind of blocking me. Um, anyway, uh, actionable steps. Um, so let's get into what are what are boundaries. Uh, and, and this is pretty, you know, st straightforward, you know, to, to be human and, you know, operate in this physical world with other human beings. And you know, do you want to record this brother? I, I thought I was recording it. Yeah, it's being recorded. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, buddy. That's okay. Um, and the other thing I really wouldn't mind doing is just moving this video you guys are like right across the top of my screen. Okay, I'm just gonna start that over again. Um, you were the, the the gallery image of everybody was blocking half of my slide. Oh, it just does it automatically. Hang on one sec. <clears throat> Get out of here. It's really frustrating. Okay, there we go. Um, so you know, let's let's talk about what boundaries are. And, you know, the premise behind this really is, you know, we exist as, as social humans and we operate in this physical world and we need to be clear about what our boundaries are and, and we need to be clear what others' boundaries are. And, and that way we can live in this beautiful, you know, symbiotic exchange of, of respect and, and understanding. And I don't know about you, I was talking about this with somebody the other day, uh, but when you're like 
when you spend time with someone and you're really never that clear where you stand with them, it's really uncomfortable, really uncertain. You just can't really read them. You don't understand, you know, what goes and what doesn't go. And, um, you know, it's a really uncomfortable position to be. Uh, it, it's almost alienating. And and I don't know if you've had that experience, but, you know, a lot of this is around, you know, being able to clearly uh, understand and, and appreciate and, and, and communicate boundaries. Um, and, and unfortunately, we live in a world where we're afraid of rejection. Um, you know, we want, we're afraid of conflict. Uh, and, and a lot of people exist in this people pleasing mode. Um, you know, this default mode where they just defer to other people's needs and, and their preferences. And, and, and as a result of that, uh, and constantly doing that, uh, you, you become further separated from yourself and understanding like, what are my needs and preferences, right? Like, why am I always kowtowing and, and, and being malleable to, um, to please others and to get positive feedback from others. And I know that I lived in that default mode very, very strongly until, you know, my mid thirties. Um, and, and it's, uh, it's almost like you play this persona of yourself that isn't even real. And when you realize that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty enlightening. Um, so, Let's get into, you know, some of the differences here. So what boundaries are not? <clears throat> so oftentimes, you know, we, we get this kind of a situation, right? Don't do that. You're crossing my boundary or else, <laughs> right? These ultimatum quite cut type things. And, um, and, and the interesting thing is when we, when we really think about boundaries, um, they, they have nothing to do with anybody else. They, they're not intended to change someone else's behavior. They're, they're really all, all about us. And, and I'll get into some more details around that, but there's a common misconception that, you know, it's related to the other person's behavior. Um, and, and the problem with that is like, you know, it's pretty scary when, when we need to clearly communicate these things with respect, um, you know, with emotion, with whatever we need to, um, you know, to do a good job of, um, of conveying, you know, our boundaries to somebody else. When we think of ultimatums, like they're, they're combative, they're oppositional, um, you know, they can be coercive, of course. Um, and if we think of it that way, like, of course, it's scary, you know, to, to uh, articulate and, and to try to, um, you know, explain our boundaries to others that are close to us that we want, you know, to get that respect and, and to set that kind of um, minimum standard. I'll, I'll get into that later on too. It was a really cool concept I heard on one of the podcasts that I listened to. Um, so at the end of the day, we're not going into somebody else's space and telling them how they can behave. We're protecting our home, our space, right? And we're saying, hey, if you're going to come into my space, these are the minimum standards you kind of have to live up to, right? And it's really understanding what those needs are, what those minimum standards are. Um, and, and, and that's kind of how we need to think about that. So, so what are boundaries? Another way to think about this is, you know, we're protecting our energy, our standard. We're building this fence around our house and get decide, deciding, you know, who gets to come in and on what terms um, and, and who are we letting into our space and, and how are they um, expected to, um, you know, engage with us uh, in, in order to do that in a healthy way. Um, and we'll get into some of these questions we can ask ourselves when we're setting our own boundaries, but it's, it's a personal checking system. Like, is this aligned with me? You know, does this work for me? Is this how I want to spend my time in, in this human experience in this world? Um, and, and some of those ought to be very clear to some of us already, I'm sure, um, as, as we've probably had our boundaries crossed many times. And that's kind of how we can figure out when something's uneasy, when something needs to be understood and maybe communicated a little bit better. Um, and, and, and the benefit of this is like when we do have healthy boundaries, it, it can transform every area of our life. Like if we have the ability to truly understand and appreciate what our boundaries should be um, so that we can perform at our best or be fully human, live at our minimum standard, feel respected, feel empowered, um, self-confident, et cetera. You know, what, what a beautiful way to, to, to feel safe and, and, and to, you know, live in line with what serves you and to continually, um, you know, play that um, over and over again and, and, and to refine it and to, and, and to continue down that path. Um, two things I wanted to talk about when we're talking about what boundaries are, or they're not, um, you know, there's this concept of leaky or porous boundaries and this concept of, of rigid, like hyper rigid boundaries. Um, and neither of those are, are, are really healthy. Leaky or porous obviously should make sense where, you know, we're super inconsistent with, with something, you know, if, if that's the case, or if we allow it sometimes and not others, or we make exceptions, or it's not a boundary, it's, it's not, a, it's certainly not a healthy boundary, right? Um, and, and then that overly uh, outrageously rigid boundary that is like my way or the highway or, or, or that kind of element, you know, that that's not healthy as well. Um, you know, the, when you've got these impossibly high expectation and, and these outrageous consequences, um, you know, you probably need to look at that a little more carefully. 
alkaline and soften. And so there's these ideas that things that are too leaky or inconsistent, or that, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, outrageously rigid ideas, you know, some of these might, and, and there, there could be obviously some black and white things that are important, right? Um, but there's the this concept of rigid boundaries when it when it's coupled with these high expectations is what they're talking about that you know that that impossibility is 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 a little bit overwhelming so let's talk about setting healthy boundaries and when we get into this idea you know there's there's quite a bit involved here and, and I wanted to touch on the highlights of the things that I appreciated the most but um and and a big part of this is relationships right so how how do we set healthy relation or boundaries in our relationships with others particularly our partners but you know maybe some of our close friends and other people as well um and and there's this problem where we we sometimes assume <laughs> that others know us well enough um that th they'll they'll respect the things that are important to us or 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 that they'll behave in a way that you know we feel is is really important um from a feeling safe and and, and other element point of view um but we can't expect people to know you know what we're thinking and what we want and and it's a common issue when when we're talking about boundaries is there's frankly little communication around it right you know have have you ever sat down with your partner and had a really you know open discussion around um uh, what your healthy boundaries should be, you know, and we'll get into some of these examples of what kinds of things you can talk about. But I'm, you know, thinking about my experience. Um, I've rarely done this exercise so only only recently uh, in, in the past couple of years. Um, and and what happens when we don't do that, like when we don't clearly communicate, and unfortunately, people don't know. And so they may cross some of those lines with us. Um, and then and then we, you know, we can build resentment, we can start behaving in a passive aggressive way, you know, we can be distant or separate, and it causes like these weird little conflicts. And a lot of them are arising out of this inability, um, you know, to lay some of these things on the table, uh, articulately, and to just have a healthy, respectful, open discussion about it at the end of the day. And so, you know, think about when you're setting healthy boundaries, like, what am I comfortable with? Like, you know, and I listed some examples here, but, you know, some of these things come up in today's world, like, you know, when when somebody expects you to, to message them back or, um, you know, or when somebody um, has an issue because you have a relationship with, you know, an ex-partner or somebody else in that respect. And there's some of these things that, um, or saucy IG accounts, um, I stole that from one of the podcasters because I thought it was funny, but um, Greg has a lot of saucy uh, IG accounts, um, but I don't think uh, Mandy minds, so that's okay. But in any event, like, what are you okay with, right? At the end of the day, what are you really comfortable with and and, and why, right? Like you, you need to dig into that as well. And we'll get into some other things that you can ask yourself and think about, um, you know, and then what, what am I available for, right? And this is a real problem, I think, for us uh, in, in today's world, like how often we reluctantly say yes to things that we frankly want to say no to, for example. And so that kind of thing, like what what am I really available for? What, a, what are my expectations and standards? What do I want to be involved with? Who do I want to spend time with? You know, those kinds of things. Um, who am I going to open the gate for? And, and what am I not, right? And I listed an example for me, and, and I know it resonates with some of you, but, you know, people that frankly, get wasted and are unruly. And there's no shortage of examples of that. Like that doesn't work for me. I don't want to be in that environment and I will remove myself from that environment. They can do that. It has nothing to do with them. I'm not saying you can't be that way, um, you know, but just having that kind of an experience. And we need to really think about like, what am I available for? And what, what am I not available for? Um, and am I willing to prove to myself that I will um, follow through and protect myself from those situations and make sure that I'm not being eroded or otherwise, you know, affected by these things that don't work for me. Um, so that's, that, that's a big one. Uh, same idea, you know, what works and what doesn't work for me. Um, and, and the reason I asked it that way, of course, is that when we need to communicate these things, um, asking some of these questions this way, allow you to not only understand what we're talking about, but also to communicate it with somebody else, right? So what, when X happens, you know, this is, this is why this doesn't work for me. It's not saying you do this, or you did that, or, or otherwise, you know, being uh, conflict oriented or otherwise, but you're just clearly explaining why something's important to you, um, and, and why you need to enforce it. And I'll, um, I'll give it an example shortly that that just happened with me a, a few days ago. But in any event, just some examples uh, here that that may or may not resonate. But you know how often you need to spend time together, and I'll come into five categories in the next section that kind of are, are ideas that you can talk about if if you are looking for some examples of things that you can communicate with uh, others in your relationships, whether that's your spouse or somebody else. 
Um, and so when we talk about that, that communication piece, um, it's not only like, this doesn't work for me. It's also like, why doesn't it work for me? Right. Um, I won't do that because some, and sometimes this is reciprocal, like going the other way. Right. It's not just like, what do other, how other people need to, uh, what they need to respect to, to, you know, come into your space. Um, sometimes it's things that you need to keep out of your space, things that you won't bring yourself into things that you won't do. Right. Um, and the example I was going to give, cause I knew this was coming up is, you know, uh, recently I was asked to do something, uh, and it, it was, it's fairly simple. Um, but I already had, you know, a commitment to do some climbing. And, um, as Greg will know, like sometimes you plan these things and for, you know, once a week, it's important that I climb because we have a big trip in August and maybe a bigger one next year. And I want to show up for the guys that I'm climbing with. And that's important to me. And I need that time. Right. Um, and I've structured that time and I've communicated that time. Um, and, and I, and I'm going to stand behind that boundary. Right. So that was a very clear example of something that, you know, th these things can be nascent sometimes. And we really need to think about, um, you know, when we're, um, feeling uneasy about being asked to do something or something happening in our environment, you know, digging into that uneasiness is, is, is what you probably need to do and understand, you know, whether that's because there's, there's a boundary being crossed, something that's important to you, um, is, is perhaps being, you know, violated or infringed upon. And that's, you know, that kind of concept. And then of course, communicating these things, we don't want to be defensive. Like we don't want to put the other person on the defensive and that just has an poor negative impact on the on the ability to communicate in a respectful clear way um and 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 it because they feel like they're malicious or controlling if you're being defensive it's like saying that the, the other person is the aggressor and, and that they're being um you know overwhelming and and obviously that's going to make them defensive and then you're going to have a frankly a, a useless conversation um and so think about what your boundary is set it and look at yourself in the mirror and articulate to, uh, to yourself a bunch of times, right? Like how, how, how practicing how to express these things can really help, um, you know, bring those things into communication when you need to with somebody else. Um, and so that was one of the elements. Uh, my uh, organization of these uh, headings are a little bit, I thought I, I thought I fixed them all, but I guess not. They're popping up at, uh, in a different order, but that's okay. Um, and so, Let's talk about enforcing boundaries. It's one thing to, this thing is moving too quickly. I apologize, gentlemen. Right on. Okay, so we can set our boundaries, we can discover our boundaries, um, and then we need to enforce them, right? What often happens with porous or leaky boundaries that we visited earlier is sometimes we might say something, sometimes we might not, whatever. Like we have a duty to ourselves to when we do our, when we are clear about a boundary um, that works for us, um, that we need, we, we owe it to ourselves to enforce these things when the need arises, right? Um, and so you have to believe in it and be committed to your emotional safety and enforce it, right, at the end of the day. Um, and uh, and it's up to you to create that accountability. And that's this is a big trust piece, like with ourselves, right? Like people, people often have an untrusting relationship with themselves because they failed to stand up for their authentic self so many times that it's eroded that level of trust it's made and then and then you've got issues with anxiety and other kinds of things that arise on a regular basis right um and so this is really about fulfilling a promise to yourself um and and enforcing that when it happens and to create consequences when it happens maybe that means walking away um it's not manipulative it's not an ultimatum or a coercive way to communicate these things it's just protecting your own energy uh, and making the decision that you need to do so at the end of the day right um and and that's hugely important because if we don't do that as i said earlier you know it erodes our self trust it, it erodes the structure that we're looking to create so that we feel safe and if and if we do trust ourselves and, uh, and, and are able to enforce our boundaries, you know, that builds, and I admit that I wish that didn't skip, skip through, but that's an important slide. You know, it builds confidence and self-trust um, so that we can show up, we can be vulnerable. Um, you know, we can uh, create that, that level of, of, of vulnerability and showing up in life because we know that we'll protect ourselves when we need to, right? Like having that ability to trust that you will protect yourself when you need to allows you to show up and be vulnerable, reduces that anxiety, you know, because you know that you're not going to let yourself down um, when the need arises. And that that was a really powerful piece for me when I was listening to this area um, of one of the podcasts. Uh, it's, it's so abundantly um, obvious to me in so many situations when, you know, people are reluctant to show up because they don't trust themselves to keep themselves safe, 
at the end of the day. And so think about that. It's a pretty powerful piece. Um, so let's talk about some actionable steps. And then we'll get into some discussion. <clears throat> um, and I'm not a huge, I shouldn't say this on the on a recorded podcast, but I'm not a huge Jay Shetty fan from usually, but I did listen to a piece that he had uh, put out a while back on boundaries. Um, and, and he did have some really interesting ideas and this is where some of this stuff comes from. Um, and so, you know, how can we be become aware of, of, of what boundaries we want to set? Um, and so let's look at our, our past relationships, like, you know, those patterns that exist in our lives, like that's what you need to look at. Um, and, and there's probably lots of situations in past relationships where, or even in our current relationship where certain things keep repeating and they don't align with us. They don't feel good. Right. Um, and, and really thinking about those situations that have arisen. And, and, and that's probably, um, a, a red, a, a, an indicator that, that there's something there that's important to you that you need to dig into. Right. Um, and so thinking about these patterns um, that have come up are certainly important and can help you kind of become aware of certain areas of, or things that, that don't work with you, right? Um, you know, may, maybe you've had previous partners that have been really close to um, some of their exes and for whatever reason, like that's a real problem, you know, for you because of whatever emotions or other things that it might create. Like there's ways to, to, to think about that and communicate it. Um, but we think about these things because they usually show up, you know, quite regularly, um, uh, or, or there's probably things that have repeated in your life that different partners, uh, said didn't align with them, things that you're doing. Right. And, and maybe that might indicate, um, you know, something that's important to you that, that you need to be clear about that you need to communicate early on so that, you know, some of those conflicts or those issues, um, you know, aren't such a surprise. And so you kind of look at both sides of that coin, um, to maybe dig into some areas that, um, that, that could be a, a, a material for a boundary. Um, and and this this is a big one, um, but we often blame other people when our boundaries are crossed. Um, and at the end of the day, we can only blame ourselves for not enforcing and, and standing up for ourselves in those situations. Um, you know, the reason we blame others is usually because we allow it to happen. And then we're feeling resentful, we're feeling hurt, we're feeling otherwise, you know, um, insert emotion here, and then we blame it on the other person, right? Um, but let's let's take that responsibility. Let's shift that let's own that emotion and not shift it onto somebody else. Cause that's obviously not productive and we've all done it, I'm sure. Um, but that's not how we enforce, you know, boundaries. We, we own it, we stand up for ourselves, we move on. Right. Um, and so this is, you know, the Jay Shetty piece. Uh, he talked about five types of boundaries that are important to be, to set about and to clear, to set and be clear about and, and express in relationship. Um, and I like these ideas. I don't think they're boundaries in and of themselves, but they lead you down kind of that communication path that could maybe help you discover what some of these are. Um, and a big one is that, that friendship boundary, you know, spending time with your friends, like really being really clear uh, on that idea um, and, and what's important to you, what's not. Maybe it's not important to you to spend time, you know, with, with friends or to have some of that uh, opportunity. But in any event, just being really clear around that, right? Um, and, and, uh, the last one is, is, is about free time, which, you know, kind of crosses over with that. But, um, you know, the other one that, that I thought was really interesting that, that he brought up was ideas boundaries. Um, and, you know, we all have ideas about life and when we meet somebody else, we get exposed to theirs. Um, and, you know, we need to be really clear about communicating, like what are, you know, important ideas, um, that shape who we are. And, uh, and that works both ways. Um, and, and the reason why that's important is that ideas that are really important to us, um, and this is a really great example of how a boundary relates to us and not controlling anybody else's behavior, um, because I put veganism here, which is something that's important, you know, to me. Um, but that's, you know, that's something that's important to me and that I feel keeps me safe and that has, you know, been a big part of my life. Um, and, and, and that's important, but that doesn't mean that, you know, Jeanette or anybody else in my life um, needs to be that way, but it does mean that they have to respect that about me, right? And that's very clear um, at the end of the day. And there's lots of examples like this that are that are out there. Um, but think about that, you know, like what are what are ideas that are extremely important to you? Um, and, and and have you had those conversations? And do you understand, you know, maybe some of these things that are really important to your partner, to others that you have relationships with? Um, and 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 finding that, you know, you don't have to be the same way, but you have to have respect for it at the end of the day, right? Um, third idea is this is a big one, I'm sure, uh, in every relationship. But um, and I really liked how he kind of broke this up. Um, rarely, I think, do we have this, you know, really in depth communication conversation around, um, you know, how we spend, invest, save, or waste money, like those financial boundaries that might be important to us, um, and and gaining. And so obviously, we need to be aware of how we do these things. 
Um, and, and then having the, you know, that honest discussion with the other to land on some of those spaces that, you know, um, you know, and express those areas that are important. Right. Um, and, and w what fits into some of these categories, um, you know, as a yogi, is that spending or is that wasting, right? Investing, I think is he, he's only intending to refer to that as like investment of money or capital. So it's a little bit different, but some of these other areas, like there could be gray area crossover. And so really being clear on some of these things, it's a great topic to kind of dig into, you know, how much should we spend? How much should we invest? What should we save? What should, how much should we waste? And how, you know, how do we get clear on some of these elements, right? Um, cause some of those are big, important elements that, uh, that you need to have boundaries around, um, that alone time boundary is really clear as well. Right. Um, in time to do with whatever you choose, whether that is spending time with friends, which was the first one, but there's a lot of other things involved here that could be important. And it's really important that we're clear about what we need, um, that we, uh, protect ourselves by, uh, enforcing that and, and taking it, you know, taking that time that we need, um, to do the things that obviously help us show up as our best selves. Um, and, um, and, and, and that's, you know, that, that's a boundary, right? When people try to erode that time or that opportunity that we need with ourselves, um, we need to stand up for it. And, and it's quite easy to communicate that that's important to you and why, and, and, and that the things that you've put in place in your life, um, you know, to do that are, are not going to be sacrificed at the end of the day. Right. And then the last one is this purpose boundary. Um, and, and we're always talking about, you know, what it, being aware of our, of our pur purpose, how, how we want to show up, how we want to share our gifts with the world. Um, and, and the more that we can set and express that to our partners, you know, the better things we'll get. This is also, to my, in my opinion, a lot like that ideas boundary. Um, but why it's more important is the purpose can certainly be all consuming in, in many ways. Um, and, and so it's really important that, you know, you're very clear on what that is and, and, and what that involves if, if you are, um, and, and to obviously have those discussions as well. Um, because that type of boundary, uh, might make your partner feel like they're not a priority and he gets into that space as well. Um, and so just spending some time, you know, in this space, understanding, uh, and, and, and setting certain, uh, you know, parameters, boundaries in place to protect your purpose is, is, is really important, right? Um, so being able to articulate that purpose, um, and how it is that you are, are, you know, establishing your life to protect it, um, with, with really clear communication and, and respectful communication, uh, is probably a huge step towards, um, you know, receiving that support and, and, and that understanding from, from others that, that you need, right. To obviously keep protecting your purpose at the end of the day. Um, most people, sadly, Jay Shetty says, just give it away for somebody else. At the end of the day, they don't protect their purpose. Um, and he also alluded to the Vedas, which say that when you protect your purpose, it will protect you at the end of the, at the end of the day as well. So some cool concepts there. So yeah, lots, lots, packed in here um, about what boundaries are, what they're not, um, how to set healthy boundaries, and then just maybe some things to think about um, practically that you you know might have conversations with others about or, or just even self-reflection upon. Um, and I'd love to get into a, you know, just more wholesome chat around this stuff. Uh, and next week, we're going to do uh, empathy, um, you know, what it is, how to develop um, empathy, emotional intelligence, that kind of thing. Um, but some uh, some interesting content there as well. So uh, on that note, I'll just stop sharing my screen. Um, still just the five of us right on. So gentlemen, 30 minutes on the nose. That was, uh, that was military accuracy. It's like you practiced. Did. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't practice. I was great, Dad. Yeah. What do you think guys? Like, um, I'm curious, like, has anybody dug into boundary kind of uh, work before and looked at some of these things and 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 uh, uh, kind of be, been familiar with some of these concepts? I think like recent for me, <clears throat> if you don't mind me jumping in first, um, I definitely resonated with that first couple of slides of people pleasing, not holding boundaries, boundaries being leaky or really undefined. Mm. Like that definitely sort of marked the earlier well, most of my life, frankly. Um, one area I think, you know, I've gotten better at it myself, but one area I think um, is tricky, curious to hear your guys' thoughts, is holding boundaries in, call them more toxic environments, certainly in work environments where, you know, you're stuck. You're stuck with the people you have. And if you try to hold a boundary and they sort of just bowl over you or don't care, don't listen, and you're sort of trapped in that scenario, you know, how how one might navigate that mm. 
I like the language you used. Trapped. Um, Are you feeling like that with Greg right now? Like, <laughs> like this weird, <laughs> awkward that he's on the phone call conversation. Yeah, you shouldn't do it when your boss is online. No, uh, I'm no, I, have, I, I, I have, <laughs> I've definitely experienced it in my work life, though. Like, uh, you know, I've worked in the field a lot. Um, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's a different culture, right? You can try and hold a boundary for guys being dicks, frankly, but in, in numbers, they just, they just don't give a shit, right? They'll bull over you. They bully you into the corner, that kind of, that kind of behavior. Like you can hold a boundary to an extent, but without sort of like, you know, go and tell mom and dad or the boss or something like that to get some help, you know, sometimes that can be a little disempowering for people that aren't in a strong position of, self-confidence right um i'd be curious like of an example of a boundary that you would feel would be difficult to uh enforce in that kind of an environment um uh, firstly to kind of think about is it really a boundary um because what when we really do dig into boundaries like they they rarely um, have anything to do with other people's behavior right at the end of the yeah day. agreed I, I i would say like examples like you know yeah. this comes from this comes from oil and gas like mm -hmm. yeah. and again you know I've, I've i've had to navigate a few of these and i was able to set some good boundaries in some scenarios and other in other cases i just couldn't um you know as as in my a younger as a younger man in my 20s but like you know let's just say that uh you know that undercutting um, just being kind of like that mean behavior that, that kind of accumulates. I don't know if you guys have ever been on the drill and rig or on, on field sites and you get that behavior, right. That guys can just be mean to you and, and you try to hold the boundary and it's like holding the boundary and, and trying to draw a line of defense almost escalates the situation to a certain extent. Um, because it's like, it's like bait. So it, this is a little bit about bullying less mm -hmm. than, but boundaries do play into that. Right. Mm -hmm. So now do i have a different approach to that absolutely i do um but yeah that would be that would be an example just just people cutting you down like you know making you small making you look and feel small that behavior is rampant in certain places mm. and never never really did understand how to navigate that other than when you're in a position you know later i was in a position of supervisor or manager positions you can cut that shit out right away because you can see the behavior and you can stop it but when leadership doesn't participate you know it doesn't stop. Yeah, I get it. I'm sure there's lots of times where it's very difficult to enforce boundaries, probably mm -hmm. also where it's most important. I even just think of like the corporate world that I existed in um, and, and the pressure that existed, um, you know, to make personal sacrifices um, to basically, you know, work harder and, uh, and, and be there late and to show up to things that you didn't really want to do you definitely didn't want to do right uh um and and the fear of the consequences of not doing those things uh you know at the end it's, it's a very similar type of i think it's that pressure and um uh it's not easy like, that's that's the whole point right it sounds like it's not like to say oh these are the things that are really important to me that i need you know to enforce to keep me safe um, and now I'm just going to go out and do it. Uh, I don't think, it, I, I think it's really hard sometimes, um, you know, and, and I, I don't think it's impossible, uh, but I think it's in the, in the example that you listed. And I'd be curious if Wesley's experienced that, if, if that still exists or not in, in his area or not. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, um, it needs to be done, but it's not easy, right? Yeah. And I think, and I think it's not, you know, I'm not trying to be sort of nihilistic on it, but I think, I think part of it, <clears throat> at least I'll speak from personal experience, is you kind of have to go through that stuff to a certain extent to know, to your point further in your presentation, to know historically when your boundaries were crossed, how it felt in order to show you and point to you the, the direction you need to go. And maybe that's just the grind of life, right? You have to kind of live through the shitty stuff in order to grow up and understand where boundaries are important, why they're important, and learn how to set them mm -hmm. in different contexts. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, you don't necessarily have an answer all the time, but uh, yeah. no, it's totally true, right? Um, one thing, um, I think it, it was Stephanie Rigg, uh, who's one of the podcasters I really like. Um, she has a podcast called On Attachment in Australia, it's really good, uh, on all sorts of different topics. But in any event, um, she kind of talks about like uh, this, this minimum standard that you set for yourself, and so when you look at kind of your housekeeping. 
um, and and the I guess the house that keeps you safe. I don't mean your physical house. I just mean like your your kind of environment and what you you set up for yourself. Um, she's like, you know, there's there should be like you should you should be clear on what your minimum standard is, and and when you enter into a relationship or otherwise, you know, with others, you should should that minimum standard should never fall, right? And there's a lot of situations I think where people like hook up in relationship, and um, and somebody's standards or both standards, you know, get eroded, um, you know, in, in that situation. Uh, and, and I thought that was a really cool way, you know, to think about it. Like, what is that minimum standard for me? Um, what you alluded to there, Ty, I, it probably has to do with like, you know, re just respect, right? Like be, being in an environment, that minimum standard is an environment where people are respectful, right? Or people respect mm -hmm. other people's kind of, um, independent human experience like with kindness or otherwise and i will not be in environments that um that, that violate that boundary uh or or engage with people that do um how that's done sometimes who knows if you're stuck on the rigs and there's nowhere to go you're not going to walk off the job maybe you will but um yeah i, I no totally I, and it's a, it's a good point dan and i mean I'll, I'll fast forward to one point in my career where those boundaries were con consistently crossed over and over and over yeah. again by the boss. And eventually I just, I had, I had to walk. I'm right. Just totally to change yeah. your life. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 uh, there's, I'm sure there's countless examples where we've like sacrificed our boundaries just because it's hard. It's too hard, mm -hmm. too afraid of the consequences or something, mm -hmm. um, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. And I'm sure Greg has so many examples in his human experience um, as well. Um, and I'd be curious what Greg has to say about boundaries um, on some level. Sure. So on the spot. Yeah, I've been happy to sit back and listen because you guys are, um, it, yeah, it's really cool to hear other people talk about it. And I agree with what's been said so far. Boundaries are a big thing. A uh, big piece of what we do. Most most uh, life craft therapy sessions will involve at least some contact with creating healthy boundaries, mm. and and affirming for people that when you create healthy boundaries from a place of grace and love, the people in your life love honoring your boundaries, and uh, and every time you do that, every time you create and hold a boundary in grace, as in not from ego, not from fear which doesn't work, especially in situations like what Ty was saying, right? If you're, if you're standing up in a safety meeting, setting a hard boundary and you're cracking, your voice is cracking and you're quivering, you're going to get exactly nowhere with that. Right. But um, when you create healthy boundaries and you, and you stand in power with that, you affirm to your nervous system. Every time you do that, you know, I create, I command, I demand, I manifest safety is available to me. In my life right sorry the way i kind of said that was a that was a bit of a hypnotic grammatical disaster that's uh <laughs> just by habit. But, yeah uh, i think yeah i think you might have caught what i meant there yeah and i love that you tied it to the self it's about trusting yourself that you will create that safety that you need and the more that you do that i think it i love that piece is uh that talked about um how it helps you show up how it helps you take risks how it helps you um, you know, do these things we need to do in life, I think, to find that, you know, that, that purpose, that what we're looking for, right, at the end of the day, like, just living that fully, truly open, like, that fully human experience that that's in line with our authentic selves, like, you know, that's why we need to understand and do this work, so that, you know, at a subconscious level, even, we support ourselves like getting out there, you know, otherwise you've got this subconscious driving the bus that's saying, Oh, you can't do that because I'm going to, you're going to, this is going to happen or this is going to happen and I'm keeping you safe and don't do it. Like, don't do it and don't do it. Just stay home and, um, you know, sacrifice those things. And, um, you know, that, that kind of a situation. That's not what my subconscious yeah. sounds like. I don't know what it sounds like, but that was my <laughs> sure. attempt at parroting its voice. Yeah. Well, one thing I love about, embarking on a journey to discover healthy boundaries and, and implement healthy boundaries in your life is that it actually can bring you into 
uh, into the truths that most boundaries, most boundaries we think we need, we really don't need. Most of the time when we're forming a boundary, it's because we've, we're holding a belief that as long as this person says that, I'm going to feel bad. Or, or until this person stops doing that, I'm going to feel bad. And um, one way that I learned this, or one of many ways I learned this is with my kids. Because, you know, when your kids are doing something that they shouldn't be doing, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but once I came in too hot and I was like, if you don't stop that, I'm doing this. And as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, fuck. And then they didn't stop. So then I had to. And I was like, oh, no. So sometimes when you set boundaries, um, you you realize that you didn't really need that boundary. And and uh, so what I'm saying is I feel like when you embark on a journey to, to delineate what healthy boundaries you need in your life, you, you come to realize that the thing you think you're going to get from setting boundaries is actually found in here right? Sometimes we think if I set all the right boundaries, then no one's ever going to offend me and no one's ever going to upset me. And my life's going to be really easy. And you, if you really come into that journey in earnest, you realize that the peace and and power and grace and the, the latitude that you deserve, that's your birthright in life is available to you now, no matter what other people are saying or doing or not saying or not doing. Absolutely. You'll never control everybody. <laughs> and, and yeah, uh, Michael Singer talks about that. If you're waiting for your environment to never offend you or never um, scare you or otherwise, like you, you can't control it all. Like at the end of the day, you can only control this piece. Um, and and yeah, absolutely. What were we gonna say, Ty? Sorry. No, I, I was gonna say that that that's that's really well put. And man, our kids ever like the example? Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that can be really hard sometimes yeah and i i've done the same thing if you don't stop this i'm doing x and man just never threaten that because you're always going to have to follow through yeah 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 well, Too funny. You, you can threaten it if you're willing to follow through but, oh yeah. it's always more work to do the follow through <laughs> yeah. yeah all you really want is a break mm. yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. What do you mm -hmm. think, Mr. Mr. Kurt, the most professional studio set up in the, uh, in the crew? Intergalactic. I like um, it. Yeah. Boundaries. I think I've associated most oftentimes boundaries with anger. So I try and reverse unravel it. Mm -hmm. if I find myself getting angry about something. Um, I use that as a sign to be like, oh, my boundary was crossed somewhere. And then I try and dig into that a little bit more and think, well, what was it? Like, I don't know, someone sends a text to me but doesn't want to come to work or whatever it is and gets me angry. And I pull it back and think, you know, like, what's this boundary here? Like, are they lying to me? Is uh, I, then, you know, ultimately comes down to me feeling like my time isn't valuable to someone else. So then I don't feel like I'm enough in that sense. And then, you know, just keep peeling it back all the way to the bottom. And it's just the fact that I don't feel like I was loved as a child or something like that. It always just leads to the same place. But, uh, you know, like you guys were saying, you can't, it's hard. You can't just take uh, a rule of thumb, I guess you'd say, like boundaries, set it here. Like it's a good starting point, but it's all encompassing with everything else. And I've found when I've fixed some of the root problems, not that I'm fixed or anything, but when I fixed some of those root problems, you know, through whatever hypno with Greg or whatever it might be. Um, as they start to unravel, I have less and less times when I become angry. So I have less times to unravel. And then when I'm in these situations, maybe like Ty was speaking about, like where you say you're in a border and we're talking to somebody professionally and, you know, they don't pick up and sense that like insecurity or whatever. And you're not vulnerable as like a target for those people to cross boundaries. It's like you're already sitting in this confidence, I guess you'd say, of who you are. You know who you are. You know what you want. You're not a dick about it, but you're communicating clearly. All of these things come together, and then the boundaries don't get crossed in the first place. It's almost like prevention. But, I mean, it's it still happens. So I guess it's dealing with that as it comes, but it's a learning process for sure. Yeah, it definitely is. And 
what you you went down a bit of the your like the rabbit hole on some of these boundaries that can come up that can really dig into you know uh, the, the past and all these other emotions and other kinds of things that exist in that in that spectrum um i think there's very simple ones as well right like we can we, i could think of several that i i i know that that i need to uh, enforce um, that are straightforward, right? Like as a lawyer, I'm constantly bombarded by people that want free legal advice, right? Um, and I have to set a boundary uh, because I know when I let that happen, um, I'm I'm just a grumpy bear and, and it doesn't sit well with me um, because of that respect for time. And maybe there's other reasons for it at the end of the day. But, you know, in order for me to function as my best self with all the responsibilities that I have, you know, if people need that, they need to they need to make some time, an appointment, whatever you want to call it, right? There needs to be like a, a process there. And it's shocking how often people will just come up and be like, oh, here, I have this agreement. Can you read like literally like right in your right in your in your in your space? I'm like checking in a yoga class. I'm like, I don't have time to do this right now. But there's like really obvious ones. Right. And um, I think there's some, there's bigger ones, too, that require a lot of reflection and unpacking. Um, but do you think of those other times, like the example I just gave, where like people, um, you know, there can be situations where your safety net gets imposed on and like, do you stand up for yourself? Like, you know, cause sometimes that's not, it's not easy, right? It's not easy because we're, we don't want to hurt somebody. We don't want to feel rejected. We don't want conflict. I don't know. There's lots of reasons why we often don't do things, um, you know, but, but that's, that's the piece that. Um, I think practically we can look at, there's a lot of situations, I think almost every day where um, there's an opportunity to, you know, identify some of the stuff and, and it doesn't have to be a, um, a, a childhood trauma deep, deep dive. That's for sure. Um, I, I don't think, but. Wesley, my, um, my hydraulics on my skid steer aren't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a chip or two, Wesley. It's pretty old. Yeah, I don't think heart. it's heavy duty, so it shouldn't take you long. <laughs> and my ERS needs an oil change. No. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know that kind of stuff happens all the time, right? Like all all the time. Yeah. Totally. Um, and, and and the situation's easy, but there's a boundary there, like that relates to time, that relates to you know some structure, some safety, some of those elements for sure. Um, you know, every single time. Uh, yeah. And it kind of comes to like a personal boundary, you know, because you can be flexible with that kind of stuff too. Like I know same thing with trees, people want a bunch of stuff for free or they want information for free and versus the work. And it's like, I charge for information, like I charge for consultation and, and whatever it might be. But, you know, sometimes it's almost like it depends on the mood and sometimes providing information for free in the moment is valuable. Like I feel better about it. They feel better about it results in more business, whatever. Like it doesn't always have to be a charge. Like I don't always want to be like hard line. My time is worth this information's worth this, take it or leave it. Because then I think you become a dick too. And then people don't like that. And, but I mean, if you want to cut all those people out because you want to simplify your life and only have the people that respect you, like close family and friends that know you're this hard ass in that sense, that's cool too. Like you can, you can live that life if you want. So I think it all comes down to each moment individually and the nuances and uh, and how you want to go about things. Because I've had a lot of I've had a lot of good come back to you from doing a lot of quote free work for people. I've tried to alleviate my own personal stresses on that this last year doing tree work and think don't get so caught up in it because it's created more battles than it was worth trying to fight people on where my boundaries are, as opposed to just being like you know what works out works out. I'm not going to go to the extremes, obviously, and try and find polite ways to explain it. But um, people were generally happier. I was happier. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's that's all I'm looking for. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I think what you've identified there, uh, Kurt, was what Greg said earlier: is like sometimes we think we have boundaries, but they're not really boundaries, right? Like I need to be paid to feel safe from my. Like, that's not a boundary at the end of the day. Um, there's something else there, like right, like even even in my example wasn't about about money necessarily, um, but it's it's just about time and it's about uh, maybe respect and some other elements. But in any event, like I think when we dig down some of these things, these aren't rules. Like I will always, um, you know, 
charge for X or I will always require my partner make dinner three times a week. Like those aren't like these kinds of rules or things aren't, aren't boundaries at the end of the day. So I, what, what you're talking about is fluid and dynamic and sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. And, but there, there's something else going on underneath that surface as to, I guess, the way that people might approach you in those situations or how that discussion might happen, right? Or, um, or, or that certain expectations don't exist, um, you know, without um, involving you, right? At the end of the day and, and respecting kind of your perspective or your willingness, yeah. time and energy, um, you know, to do something at that moment in time, right? Or in that, in that week or, or whatever. Um, I'm really noticing a correlation too between those events and like my vibe before that. Mm. Like if I'm, if I'm stressed out or I've already had a couple of, you know, small interactions that have already tipped me off to this level of anxiety or anger going into these situations, it's like, then the boundaries get crossed quicker, you know, or these, these opportunities present themselves to challenge me more over and over again. It's like, you're out of that flow state, you know, I don't know what it is, but I can, I can always trace it back to like mm. something else, something deeper. Like you're saying, that's just bothering you it has nothing to do generally with that situation. Mm. But again, whether we're talking about boundaries there or not, I don't know. It's, uh, well, I think it to be related. Totally. It's a chicken and egg thing, right? Like, were yeah. you feeling that way because you'd let a whole bunch of boundaries get crossed and then you're kind of in that space or are you in that space? Um, and, and then, and then, you know, that other, that other side happens. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure it's abundantly clear, but, um, I know that I was most grumpy, most resentful, uh, most irritable as a lawyer in my previous life when I just allowed too many crossings and the erosion eventually put me in a state that I was just yeah, um, a shitty, shitty dude. Right. Um, and, um, and, and I think that that's, I think that's where that resentment comes from. That's where that like behavior might come from at the end of the day, um, is when we've let ourselves down. Like, you know, I, there's so many things I've let myself down with this week or the last few weeks. Um, and, and now I'm just, I just don't feel well. Right. And I'm, and I'm obviously not going to show up in, 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 as a it's a um as a great guy and that's what i've noticed yeah. in my history for sure um you know taking it yeah i feel that yeah yeah totally totally wesley give us something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i really like that idea of the the purpose boundary yeah uh, in the list of of types of boundaries, yeah. Um, it, it was just an interesting way to to think about it because we have uh, priorities in our life, and and people get confused, feel resentful, or mm. uh, like their boundary is being crossed when you defend your boundary to to have a purpose and to not uh, just lose your, lose yourself and give it up when um, other people want something from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big piece. Um, I thought about that one a lot. And for me, Wesley, it came down to um, if, if you do have some clarity around your purpose, you know, what, what are, what are the things that you need in your life, you know, to protect that purpose? Right. Um, you know, I love that you do karate with your daughter, like every Saturday, like that's really, really cool. Um, you know, there, there's a boundary in there somewhere, right? Like, um, you know, that's important to you and no, you won't do X because that's something that is, you know, important in, in, in your life. And yeah. It's like a, a time with friends boundary kind of thing right? or, exactly. or, or like rock climbing for you. Like it's, it's right. something that you committed to go do and it's important to, honor your commitments uh, and responsibilities right. right yeah exactly right um and so yeah no no like i'm sorry like 
think of the situation. Sometimes we're really nascent situations like, no, babe, I won't pick you up because it's my climbing night and you can take an Uber or mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a lot of like different little things, um, you know, that can show up and, um, and, and you, it's, 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 and you have to, uh, you know, be clear. Uh, it's not easy to be clear on some of these things. Um, but I think if you are and they're clearly communicated, um, you know, everything will work out just fine. <laughs> yeah, it's important to communicate the the why so the person understands the, that it is important mm. because maybe they don't see how it's important or yeah, uh, they, they don't value it in the same way. Totally. One thing we talk about a lot in my men's group is is energy and not giving your energy away um you know to to others and the bully example you had ty is a great example of like people trying to take your energy and when you react you give it to them right um and uh i think yeah in in a different way thinking about boundaries are like situations where you might be pressed upon to give your energy away and you need to protect your energy at the end of the day um, so, and, and that's probably that as the uneasiness that, that we get in some of those situations, because we're, um, you know, that as uneasiness comes from probably that spectrum and, and that vulnerability there. Uh, and, and it can be a, I think, a litmus test, uh, you know, for something to look into as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. Right on. Well, guys, like I said, um, if you're interested in this stuff, um, I would strongly recommend Stephanie Rigg. Um, she has a great podcast. Uh, there's other ones as well. Um, a surprising number of like Australian women um, in, in this space, which was kind of, uh, and, and then Jay Shetty, uh, but he's, uh, he's hitting this, I find uh, for me anyway, he's got, you know, some good stuff, but a lot of it I find is, uh, doesn't resonate with me, but in any event, um, we all have those pieces that we enjoy and, and, and otherwise. Um, and I'd encourage you to check some of this stuff out. Like there's, there's just incredible stuff out there um, that, that we can access that can really help us, um, uh, you know, put some of these pieces together uh, in, in hugely beneficial ways. So um, as always, uh, pleasure to have you here. Honored to do this for you guys and with you guys. Next week, we're going to get into empathy. Uh, which I think is really important. Um, and there's uh, what I've already been researching and listening to so far has, has been really, really enlightening. So I'm excited to share that information with you guys next week. And uh, yeah, man, have an awesome rest of your Tuesday evening. I appreciate you taking the time to be here and we'll perhaps see you in a, in a week or so. Well, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Dan. See you, awesome see content you. is always done. Right on, man. Okay. Have a great, great presentation. Okay, thanks, buddy. Take care. See ya. Bye. Good night. Bye.